Hello everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. The last time I was here at Diamond's London, Ontario factory, we talked about the Aspen E1000 as an add-on option for the DA20, which is a popular trainer. At Oshkosh, uh, Diamond announced that they would make available as an option the new Garmin G500. So we decided in this brief video to drill down and see what exactly is the difference between these systems. First, let's take a look at an older steam gauge panel. Uh, this is a typical six-pack panel, got vacuum-driven instruments, perfectly competent. Thousands of instrument pilots learn how to fly on these things. Of course, as glass becomes more popular, there needs to be some means to train these pilots, and that's what Diamond had in mind by offering the E1000 and the G500 from Garmin. So uh, let's take a look at those systems. Uh, but first, let's note that uh, for the basic six-pack, the air aircraft price is about $175,000, and the add-ons come in $5,000 increments, so uh, let's take a look at the details on that. Let's take a look at the Aspen EFD-1000 first. Now, Diamond's basic idea here is that if you install the EFD-1000 for an additional $5,000, you're offering the student the ability to work with an, what is essentially an entry-level glass panel system. Now, as this is set up, it's in a standard six-pack, and you're replacing the two steam gauges with a solid state attitude gyro and an HSI. Now, if you want to step that up a little bit, you can customize the uh, EFD-1000 to include airspeed and altitude tapes. Now, this particular system is being driven by a Garmin GNS430. It has a Garmin SL40 number two COM, and it has a transponder. So it's a good, basic, inexpensive IFR setup. Now, let's take a look at what the G500 can do. So we've looked at the Aspen basic capability, and this is the G500 in the DA20. Now this is a $5,000 add-on over the Aspen and $10,000 over the steam gauges, so what do you get out of the deal? You get a pretty fully capable PFD and MFD. Let's take a closer look. Uh, the Garmin G500 on the left side has a complete PFD. It's very similar to the Garmin G1000 in its display. It has an AI on the top and an HSI on the bottom. Now, Garmin has recently added uh, synthetic vision to the G500, and uh, that's engaged here, although because we're in the hangar, you don't see much detail, and that can be uh, turned on and off. As far as the display itself, again, it's very G1000-like. There is a couple of differences here. On the right side, the uh, VSI, which has buggable values, is down below uh, the altitude tape. And then on the left side, you can, uh, you can also, uh, the, the bugs uh, for various V speeds, uh, including glide speed, best angle, best rate, and rotation speed, appear down here in legend form. And then as you're uh, flying, they, they come up on the airspeed tape to remind you what speed you're actually at. And we have uh, true airspeed and knots, and then there's a wind vector and outside air temperature and so forth. Now over on the MFD side, uh, again, it's somewhat similar to the G1000, although not as much detail. Uh, there are uh, not as many pages. Uh, we're looking at a basic visual page here, and then we can uh, scroll over and look at the, uh, what is essentially an instrument page. And then last, uh, there's a terrain page, which, uh, which also uh, includes detail on the synthetic vision. Now, to this system, you can add uh, the XM weather display, and you can also add traffic. So, altogether, that makes the G500 installation in the DA20 a, a remarkably complete beginning instrument trainer uh, for not much money. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. Thanks for watching.